Hey viewers, so this is a cool little town to uh, visit for a little while and a lot of these homes were purchased from the Sears catalog in, well this one here is 1849 when uh, workers were here. We're looking at the C&D canal and ships go through here. Been too long, hi Greg. So well, I think when the first canal was being uh, constructed the workers needed uh, sort of housing for a little while and so they ordered these little homes from the Sears catalog. That one's 1849, there's a sign on it. And a lot of them are still here, they haven't been knocked down. This one's been turned into a dining room and an inn. Yes, it's been a very rough trip. Very slow trip. I was able, Actually, it's a kind of a record. I made progress yesterday and today. Um, but right now we're going to look at these old homes. I'm going to walk them down a few streets. And I really don't understand uh, what years these were, were made, but the first one I looked at said 1849. It's just kind of cool to look at them. It's not too many uh, cars, except there's one right now. Yeah, Sears houses. Do you know about those? This one says 1833, the Cropper House. So I've already walked around here once to scope it out. And I know if I go down this way and turn left, there's a whole bunch. Uh, how many motor... Uh, tons! There's a bunch of major ones and then a lot of minor ones. Oh, Indiana had those too. Well, you know, I guess, you know what, if they were in the Sears catalog, it would make sense to be in more than one place. But uh, probably what's the interesting thing is, hello from Mexico. What the interesting thing is, is these, these houses, well, not this one, this just has a pretty tree, they're still here. Uh, you'd think that most places, the, uh, do I have numbers? What do you mean by numbers? Most places would have knocked these houses down long ago. Well, here we go again. Had one of those yesterday. But I thought I'd walk around a little bit so you can get a glance at, uh, at these neat little uh, row upon row. And you can buy them too. I bet the price isn't low though because you're on the waterfront. Yeah, that's the thing. These old, these old ones have been destroyed. There's, who, who would want to, you know, in this day and age, would you want to live in this tiny little house? Uh, there's a lot more room in it than there is in my boat, but, but good gracious, there's a living room, a bedroom, and a kitchen, which is really all you need, right? They wouldn't be hard to heat, that's for sure. So I think there's some appeal to them. Uh, but not if you want to do uh, do anything but but just sort of occupy a space. But it is kind of cool that this whole area, this little uh, section of Chesapeake City, on this side, has somehow manages to save almost all of these. And all of a sudden, there's uh, some cars going around. This is a touristy place, but you wouldn't think on a Monday. All right, come on. Come on, here we go. Can't you see I'm trying to cross the street? So a few are been turned into shops. Oh yeah, the uh, so I was just reading a, a note. Uh, I was saying earlier that this is the Ches Chesapeake and Delaware Canal, a little bit of water. So ships will come through here, and big tugboats and car carriers and all kinds of uh, ocean craft going. They don't want to go out to sea, so they'll go from Philadelphia to uh, the Chesapeake Bay and take the canal. There used to be a drawbridge. It got smashed up in the 40s, and they rebuilt it with this. So this is like 150 feet tall, so large ships can go underneath. I might go up to the top of it. I don't know. I don't know if I have enough energy. Where do I live? I, right now, I'm living right here. I'm on a boat. I'm going to give you a little tour of downtown as it is Chesapeake City. The, uh, the original Chesapeake City was split in two by the canal. Um, on the other side, there's nothing like this. It's all uh, new stuff. Not English, okay. 
I really mean it. The first time I walked around here, there were zero cars. Now there's all this traffic. Let's look at the date on this one. I want to zigzag across the street. 1854. So, so I've seen 1833, 1854. Uh, do I? Oh, good gracious! Where are we getting these weird people? Yeah, this. Well, uh, it all depends, I guess, on what you want to do. This is very scenic. You have a view of the water, the canal. Uh, but I think a lot of people come to this part of the country because they're going to Ocean City and the beaches. And so this little sleepy little place just gets uh, doesn't get too many people. But that might be a good thing. There's some, there's some little inns here. I don't know much about being a tourist. I just visit here on a boat. So I haven't been too far afield, except once when someone uh, took me around in a car and there's a very famous uh, horse farm nearby. World famous horses. Vast acres of of, of grassland and training grounds. I got to, we got to drive by it. So just look at these. I just wanted to show you, there's so many of these. And the thing is, they, these all came from a, cat, a Sears catalog. But they're all different. Which I think is pretty cool. This one's gotten a, uh, a boost. Yet the weather is uh, the weather is very nice for a change. Uh, you always laugh. I started out today with uh, one jacket, but I had to put on a second jacket, and now both jackets are off. So here's one of these little houses, 1853, converted into a studio. Yes, they used to sell little homes. These are off, these homes are from a Sears catalog. Obviously, this is a fancy one. It has has an extra story. Gotta dodge this thing. Boop. So we'll go down a little ways, turn left, and, and come back. I don't think this one here is from a Sears catalog. Well, I didn't know they. Oh, is this okay? Who would who would know that? I didn't know that till I arrived here, and uh, and found out somehow on a sign or something. So I don't think this house came from a Sears catalog. Oh, the Sears catalog was huge. It was, it, you know, there weren't department stores. There wasn't Walmart. How did, how did you get things? You had to, you had to come in the catalog. So I think this, this is a slightly more prosperous street. A little more ornate. You know, this one's another three-story. But they're still tiny. I think they probably had an extension put on out the back of that one. Nope, oh, school's out. And there's a boat ramp nearby, so there's always some activity with, with boats launching and, and uh, coming out again. This one's been slightly fixed up. The porch has a, a metal metal uh, roof. It's nice how people have uh, have preserved these and uh, made them look nice. But the other thing I noticed, I haven't seen this until today, the leaves are starting to come out. Greg, I'm I'm going to be here for multiple nights, unknown how long. There might be a chance to leave on Thursday, and there might be a chance to leave on Friday. Uh, the stretch in front of me is the most treacherous on the East Coast, Delaware Bay. And I have to be super, super careful about picking a good day for our travel. I could take a slight shortcut this way through someone's driveway. I wonder if that was one of those old houses. Looks kind of too new though. Yes, I'm, I'm a tourist. I guess you could call me a tourist. I'm burying the antenna farm. I don't know what that means. Uh, Greg, watch out, you don't get blocked. If people put in weird comments, that's usually a uh, cause for trouble. I love the paint scheme on this one. 
just lovely how people have put a little effort into making nice nice gardens and trees and everything. And there's a sign there, we won't hope I to look at it. I don't know what, I'm not even near New York. There's no antenna farm here. Greg, you're mixing me up. So this is the second second street of them. They're quite numerous. Here's a car from Massachusetts. So that must be a hotel or people are visiting. I'm in Maryland. And here, here's a house not fixed up, which is nice to see for a change. I just love the architecture here. How would you like to sit in that cupola and look out? Greg, there's your antenna farm. It's at the top of the chimney. If you're still here. There, one of these is a... Uh, ask what you think. Uh, no. Um, years ago I overheard people going past my boat saying how one of them thought she was fat. I yelled out, you're not fat! Which I think amused her. And another time I was here and I needed gas, so I went up and found someone sitting on one of the front porches and the guy took me to the gas station. I was actually asking him if there's a taxi. But there's no taxi here. It's too remote. I, I wouldn't even think there would be any kind of service here. If you don't have a car, you're kind of out of luck. So, it's a nice little place for, for a vacation. Yeah, this is very beautiful. That's why I like to... My, my goal in periscoping, I don't care if I have seven viewers or, or 300, is I want to show you something interesting. I have to look at... I'm looking both ways before I cross the street. Yeah, here we go. This place is much busier in the fall. Right now, it's, the spring has been too cold, so people aren't uh, flocking down here yet. Which is good for walking around. I'll try to get closer to this one. This used to be a... still is a shop. Well, thank you, thank you, Greg. So, you know, in the old days, this is what things were like. This, this one goes back. Goes back in time. Dry goods, crockery, shoes, boots, notions, which might have been needle and thread and dye stuffs. So a little bit of everything, general merchandise. Now you can get your chocolates. Unfortunately, it's closed. You can go back to this side. I like shooting to the right because the sun is a little uh, better angle. It's so nice to see the leaves starting to pop out. The sign that things are finally warming up. And in a few moments we'll end up down by the the waterfront. The uh, where is this? I haven't gotten the where is this question yet. Look at the map. It's Chesapeake City, Maryland. We're going to end up at the waterfront. The the uh, I, I don't know if this is a city or a town. They uh, provide a free dock for 24 hours. Yeah, that's right. They're all different colors. And Charleston certainly has a lot of old homes too. So you can tie up for free for 24 hours. Uh, otherwise you anchor. And it's so nice to have... You really need a stop at this point for the boat if you're traveling uh, up and down the coast. The uh, current in this canal is tremendous and a slow boat like my sailboat is uh, is constrained. Whoops! What did I do? There we go. Safe from the wind. Yes, I've been here in storms. There's the wind howling. There is a little bit of uh, of current. I'm not used to people driving so cautiously. The you know, person actually stopped at the stop sign. So let's go back to the waterfront. This uh, 
this canal used to have some locks in it, and we're at the what used to be the highest point. I'm thinking of bicycling over to the, the canal museum and showing you that, too. That's over in that direction, on the other side of this basin. Uh, yeah, this is near Baltimore, but to get to it, it's a long trip. It's on the other side of, of Chesapeake Bay from Baltimore. But last night I was listening to the Baltimore radio station. Now we're down by where the wind's blowing a little. Oh, someone's, some other boat's come in in front of me. So I think I'm going to uh, scope out in about a minute. Maybe say hello to my neighbors. And uh, bicycle over to the Canal Museum and see if I have a signal there. So if you see another scope in a few minutes, then we're, we've, we've lucked out. Uh, when I was here last time, the, uh, the phone service had a strong signal but no data, so it was too slow. I think there are just too many people visiting. But there's hardly anybody here now, so I'm going to give the, uh, give the Canal Museum a little try. And I'll end up with this, I'll uh, give you this, this scope will end with this view. There's a few, uh, a few buildings up in that direction. So I'm spending the, the night anchored. I'm waiting for some friends to show up for dinner. I'm gonna, after dinner I'll go and, and anchor out here because it's gonna start raining and raining hard for several days and there's the 24 hour limit at the dock and I would rather leave the dock when it's dry than when it's uh, pouring buckets. Plus, plus the uh, ships go by here and, and other boats go by fast and it gets rough. I'd rather be up in up inside here where it's not rough. So everyone, thanks for watching for a bit. I'm going to bicycle off to the museum and and hopefully it's open and I have a signal and I'll try to give a scope from in there. So see you uh, next time, maybe very soon.